name is Daryl Gilbo. If you don't know who I am, um, some of the things I've voiced include uh, Mikado in Durarara, uh, Maimon in Blue Exorcist, uh, Magi, the Magi series on Ren Hakuru. Uh, some of my older titles are like uh, Hiragashi, When They Cry. I, I'm Satoshi Hojo. And um, let me see, let me see. Sometimes I forget. Uh, Prince of Tennis. I was the, uh, a show called Boys Be, Overman King Gainer, Melody of Oblivion, Paranoia Agent, uh, Samurai Shemplu, uh, Deers, um, 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 Kakashi, uh, Kamichu. Um, this is all kind of stuff. And then video games, um, probably, I think my most notable one would be Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Ultimate, I, anyone know who I voice in that? Who's played it? Who's played it? You, you played it? A little bit? You played it? Okay, I'll, I'll give you a hint. I'm on the Capcom side. Beautiful, You read my bio, right? Are you guessing? Oh, beautiful picture. Oh, <laughs> very good. Yes, I do Beautiful Joe, which is a lot of fun. Um, I hated it, though, that he wasn't in the last one. You know, how dare they? How dare they take my character out of that game? Uh, also, in several of the Dynasty Warriors, uh, anyone play that? Play those Dynasty Warriors? Yeah, uh, I'm in six. I play like a Taisi Chi in those. The latest one, uh, Dynasty Warriors Eight. I'm uh, Shushu, and also Eugen. Um, who do do? Oh, uh, it was it was a Wii version. It was a Final Fantasy, but it was uh, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Crystal Bearers, and I play Lael in that one. Um, a lot of uh, other ones like Dawn of Mana. Um, oh, what's that other one? It's, yeah, just a bunch of RPG stuff too, Cold Decept Saga, <coughs> stuff like that. Uh, I've also acted live human being things, you know, where you see me on the screen. I, actually, I'll just maybe show you a clip in a little bit. Um, my latest thing was uh, I was in a movie called LBJ, I don't know if anyone ever heard of it, with Woody Harrelson. He plays Lyndon B. Johnson, and um, I'm one of the people in his administration. Um, 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 oh, I was on Victorious. <laughs> Never watched that. Yeah, I had a uh, part on Victorious. And um, a long time ago, Wind Talkers with Nicolas Cage. Um, Alias with Jennifer Garner. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything. Oh, my God. I was on Gene Simmons' Family Jewels. So I had a part on that. Oh, we'll oh. talk reality television in a bit. Oh, my God. But, yeah, I was on that. Um, oh, my God. Saved by the Bell. <laughs> I was on that when I was way young. Girl. Oh my god. Young girl, much younger. And um, let's see, what else have I. Well, yeah, you know, as an actor too, I'll talk about it a little bit. You do so many things that you guys would never even hear about, you know what I mean? Uh, certain types of dubbing or like English language tapes, uh, dubbing of live action movies. You know, sometimes you'll uh, act in educational films, industrial films for companies, you know, so as an actor you've got art, like I, I did an, a, a film for an artist that it actually goes around like to museums and it, like, it goes on the loop along with the sculpture. So it's, been, it's played like in MoMA in New York, MoCA in LA, I mean, yeah, I get um, London Royal Academy, so that's kind of been interesting for me that, you know, knowing I'm in a museum. Um, yeah, and theater, commercials, what, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, I'll start off if anybody has any questions about anything, that anything that you would even want to know about um, what the process of any kind of acting or any backstage stories about some, because I do have some about LBJ, um, you know, what it's like to kind of be around some of these people, uh, even experience of just being an actor, being a voice actor, how you get work, the perils of being an actor, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. Because it, it's not all, you know, glory, <laughs> trust me. What, what's, your, what's your name? My name's Dario. Dario, mm -hmm. very close to my name. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, I was wondering, just to start off, where, where did you get your start in? Where's your intro in the Right, uh, you know, it, again, that's sort of like a uh, long answer because, um, Firstly, I just wanted to be an actor. And um, I was just trying to get work wherever I could and was worried, oh my God, I gotta tell you some B movies I was into. Oh my God, you got, I gotta tell you about that. Um, 
Anton was acting, and I had done an industrial film for uh, Ari the state of Arizona. <laughs> this is so weird, yeah. And it was about pyramid scams, because like it was illegal in Arizona, so they you know paid actors to act in this little thing, so it'd be like an educational thing to tell people you cannot do pyramids. So I played the son, right, of this father who lost all the money, right, in, in the pyramid scam. So I was like the son in this little thing. And I stopped acting for a while. So, and I actually moved to Hong Kong, and I lived there. <laughs> so then I moved back to LA, didn't start acting right away. Uh, then I started again, and I was actually at an audition. And at this audition was the woman who played my mother in this industrial film, right? In Arizona. And I was like, so I went up to her and I said, you played my mother in this thing a long time. And she's like, oh my gosh, yeah, 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 yeah. So we, we just started talking and she was very open and everything. And then she said, you have a very young sounding voice and my husband directs anime. Uh, I'm gonna get you an audition because they're looking for a character in this new anime that they're doing. They're auditioning actors. So, and as an actor, you know, you hear a lot of things, people say a lot of things, and a lot of times they don't come to fruition. So I just like, you know, whatever. You know, you hope it happens, but a lot of times you think, yeah, they're not gonna really give me the, I'm not gonna get an audition. But then she, she did, they called, she gave the information to her husband, he gave it to Bang Zoom Entertainment, and then they called me. And so I, they knew I didn't have voice over experience. Um, and the show was called Overman King Gainer. Anyone know that show? It was a Tamino show. It was, it was with um, Bandai, you know, which doesn't exist anymore. So I don't even know if you can get it. But it is one of the, like they call it the anime legends. You know, those, in, it's, one, it's one of the anime legends. It's, it's actually more popular in Japan than it ended up here. But it was uh, sort of Tamino, it was a little bit more of a lighter version instead of Mobile Suit Gundam, you know? So this was lighter. And uh, so I went in, they, they showed a scene, and they said, don't worry about matching the lip flaps. Don't worry about you know, any of the technical aspects. Just, we'll show you the preview, here's the lines, and then just act it. You know, I still saw, that, saw it going on, but I didn't have to worry about matching. So in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm not gonna get this. I don't have the experience. I'm just gonna have fun, you know? And I just did it, and then they did call, then, oh, and then she got me in to see this other guy at New Generation. I didn't hear anything from Bang Zoom, and I went in and just kind of watched, and I talked to the guy, and he said, okay, I'll give you some, some small parts on uh, Captain Herlock, uh, Cyborg Zuzerine, you know? And I was like a flagship officer, so I was in a few episodes. So that was a good little experience. And then Bang Zoom called me and said, hey, would you come be this brother role uh, in a show called Stelvia. So I was this little kid, and uh, that was fun and everything, and then a couple months later, come on in. Uh, a couple months later, they call me and they say, oh, congratulations, you have the lead in Overman King Gainer. And I was like, you know, first I was really excited, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I got this. And then I was scared. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I got this. Can I do this? You know, like, can I do, because I've never done that before. And um, they said, you know, we know you don't have the experience. Uh, Tony Oliver was actually gonna be the director. And he, the great thing is too, you know, he does um, workshops for, he goes around to conventions in different cities and does like weekend workshops for people who wanna be voice actors. So basically I had a director who's also a teacher. So I learned, I had like on the job training basically, which was so great. And it took a year to do Overman King Gainer because what they would do is, you know, they do the first maybe four episodes, four or five episodes, then you have a break. So they weren't like in a rush to have to get it out, you know? Like sometimes now they're like, oh, we gotta, you know, everybody's gotta go fast, fast, fast. And uh, so I, that's how I sort of got my first break, I guess, into voiceover. And then after that, it just kept going. So, I, I, you know, every voice actor has totally different stories about how they get into this industry, you know, and that's the amazing thing. It's not like sometimes like, okay, I train to be a plumber or I train to be a doctor, you know, and you go and you apply and you get the job and stuff. That, you know, there's just so many ways to get in a, a, as a voice actor. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone? Yes. And what's your name? Anthony. Anthony. 
Um, are you friends with any uh, uh, other voice actors? I hate them all. <laughs> no, enemies, enemies. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, the thing is, I mean, I've been doing it since 2004, I think. Something like that. So, you know, like Kyle Abair, um, you know, even like Blake, even though he lives in Texas, I live in LA. You know, I see all these people at conventions. So it's always like a, a reunion, you know, when you see people again. You know, and that's the, sort of the fun part too about being a voice actor at convention, is you get to see some of these people you don't get to see all the time. Um, and even LA actors, you know, I might see them in passing, you know. But sometimes we do have like events, somebody might have a gathering or something, and so, yeah. Um, do you might know Liesl Wilkerson? She did Nina in that game, what's uh, the fighting game? Um, Tekken. Tekken. She voices Nina. So I met her at a convention, and she and I are just like besties. <laughs> so, you know, we hang out all the time. We go to, like, she's also part of the Foreign Press Association because she speaks perfect Japanese, but she's a six foot blonde woman who grew up and who lived in Japan as a kid. So she learned Japanese. So she also translates. So I go to these screenings with her, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's great. I mean, that's what I love about acting, too, is you kind of go from family to family, in a way. You know, you know, if you do a play, anyone who's actors in here, anyone acted? Who's, anyone ever do a play, like in school? Okay. You know how you, you kind of bond with this group of people? You know, I, I, I've always loved that, because that's how I started, too. I was doing plays in school and, and uh, dinner theater outside of school, and I, I just love that whole thing of, um, just that camaraderie you feel with the people you're doing these shows with and then some people you, you just keep in contact with you know they kind of follow you in your life uh, in fact I'm friends with this woman who played my mother in another play years ago and we still keep in touch you know after all these years uh, so yeah anyone else I'm gonna show you a oh yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you a clip after go ahead Say that? Do you have a worse voice acting? Yeah. yeah I oh my God, yes. <laughs> it, was, it was a great experience, but, but bad at the same time. And I'll tell you why. Um, and, it, and it ended up disappointing in a different way. This is the crazy thing. Anyone here ever a show called Pretty Cure? Okay. Now, Pretty Cure was dubbed in New York. But before that, they did a, a pilot. They did the first episode in LA. And then it never got picked up until years later. Then it was done. They didn't do it in L.A. They did it in New York. Totally different actors. But um, the thing was, I played the, you know, the guardian of the prism stones? Okay. Well, I auditioned for, this, for that part, for several parts. And then uh, I saw the character and what they said. And I was like, I'm going to try something really different for this character. I'm going to do like, he, he sounded to me sort of like a, I made him like a CP3O and a Dr. Smith from the original Lost in Space, because he was very high strung and nervous. So he was always sort of like, oh no, it's the Prism Stones. You know, so that's how I did it, right? So, and I got the part. So I went in that day and I'm doing it and, and then right then, because it took about two hours, but in the middle, I started getting a migraine. Oh, no. I'm talking like, because I get some like really bad, I'm talking the bad, bad migraines where I want to, puke that's it makes me want to throw up and I just want to put ice on my head and I need to be in complete darkness so it hit me just like a ton of bricks and then I'm doing this voice where I'm on ah, and then I'm having to pretend that I don't have this migraine you know I'm at, and I feel the nausea that like I'm nauseous but I'm doing so fine I, I love doing the part but I was like I just oh my god this has got to end you know and how am I I, I want this part, I want to keep it. I'm just doing episode one, I don't want to be replaced. So I, I, I soldiered through. Then I'm like, okay, okay. If I could just make it to the bathroom, I might be able to throw up in there, right? And then afterwards you go into the sound booth because you have to uh, sign out, you know, to get paid. You sign all the paperwork. So I'm going in and they had ordered lunch. <laughs> and you know like when you're nauseous, it, there's a certain certain foods, the smells, Music. are, are the, kind of not really good for that. And they had ordered pizza. Oh. 
And so I go in there, and, I'm just, and in my head, I'm saying, I'm like all nice, nice, you know. Oh, this is great and everything. But inside, I'm like, oh, God, please don't let me throw up in the booth. Please don't let me throw up in this room in front of them. Please don't let me throw up. So I'm signing. I'm like, oh, my God, thank God. And then I start, feeling, okay, I didn't throw up, I didn't throw up. I get in my car. It was in Burbank, and I was living on the other side of the hill, uh, closer to Santa Monica. So I'm going over the hill, but it's still with me. So I'm thinking, oh, oh I, I just, if I can just get home, if I can just get home. But then I'm going Highland. I don't know if you know LA at all, but ho Hollywood and Highland, you know, where they have, uh, well, basically the traffic there, there's nowhere to get out of the traffic. You're like in it until you're out of it. There's no possible way. And I was almost about ready to, and then there's all these cars here. I'm all right here. I was about ready to open my car door and just start, you know, going. But I held on, I held on. I'm going down the street, I'm going down Highland Boulevard, but in between Hollywood Boulevard and Sunset Boulevard. And there was a sizzler on the side that had a big parking lot. So I just, I pulled into the parking lot. I, there was a big garbage bin. Oh, oh. I went behind it, just, yeah. yeah, it was, and it, <laughs> it was loud. So people started coming out of the, the apartment buildings that were there, their balconies. So I felt like like a drunk or something. <laughs> you know? but, oh God! But you know what? It was just it was like a great experience, and at the same time a bad experience. Oh. Yeah. But one other one in terms of um, oh, and what was bad again was that it, we didn't get to do the full thing, that it never happened. And then when I read that later on, it was being done in New York. I wasn't happy. Oh. Uh, and one other one was when I was doing actually that show Stelvia. They were putting me in too much of a younger role at that point, and it was so I had to be so high that it that was just kind of difficult to maintain. So that wasn't a. I mean, I love the character, love doing it, but the, it wasn't pleasant. So I started auditioning, making sure I was keeping my range so that they wouldn't put me way too high. Because I mean, Beautiful Joe's high, but it's a different kind of note instead of playing like a kid. You know, like, you know, a lot of girls play the boy voices. Now, if they want a boy voice that has a little bit of heaviness to it, I, that's easier for me. You know, I could do like 15, 14 if they want him to, uh, you know, have a little bit of a deeper voice. Um, so, yeah. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yes. Yeah, so what's the, the strangest fan experience? Strangest fan experience? Let me see. I'm trying to remember if, I, if there was anything totally strange. A gift or something like that, or somebody try to hug you? <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I don't think I've had anything. I mean, you know, sometimes people bring weird things for you to sign. That you know, I, I you know, of course, body parts when they want you, you know, to like sign a body part is kind of <laughs> interesting. Whole thing. <laughs> so maybe that's one of the kind of the strange. Things. Hello, come on in. You're late, Maddie. <laughs> Uh, I have a friend that keeps dragging me around. I said, I'm going to be late. <laughs> well, you're here now, so. Yeah, we've got to be with Todoroki. Yeah. <laughs> we're about to have a pill fight. With oh, him. you know, it was one of the weird, okay, it, it was weird to me in the beginning where they wanted me to, like, propose as my characters. Oh. Ooh. You know, like, oh, okay. um, can you propose to me as Mikado? And, and then be like, Okay. okay, so I, you know, I do it, and they film you, and then you find it on YouTube, and you're like, oh my god, why did I do that? You know, stuff like that. <laughs> Regret know? some life choices. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I try not to look at myself on YouTube because, <laughs> you know, yikes. But, uh, yeah, so, but nothing too crazy. It is weird, though, sometimes when I get stuff in the mail, oh. and I'm like, because mm -hmm. I've gotten stuff in the mail, like, for autographs and stuff, which is fine, but I'm like, how did they get my home address? Because I don't have it posted anywhere, as far as I know. So sometimes that's a little weird, you know? Google. So, but, yeah, I but Google. I guess, but I've never tried to find it. Yeah, I guess they can find it, oh, anybody yeah. can find it. So, don't find my address. <laughs> well, from yeah. what? From what I've asked other voice actors, yeah. from people who want to send autographs, yeah. usually they prefer like if you go to either Funimation or go to Sentai right. or wherever. It's they harder though with LA because we don't have, you know, one um, specific place that we work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They don't always keep in touch like like that. But I did I actually I did get one, on, on, and I was it was very kind to of them. I was with an agent. They actually sent it to that agent, but I was not with that agent anymore. Oh. And so most agents probably would have just tossed it. 
but they were nice. They had actually opened it, so they knew it was like a fan thing. But then they were nice enough to call me and let me know, and then they mailed it to me. That's so that was kind of nice. That doesn't always happen. So yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, you guys want to see a clip, and uh, this—it's a new show, and it's—I think it's the same people who did Yu-Gi-Oh or something. I, I can't really remember, but. Um, this is called Heroes Legend of the Battle Discs. It's, right now it's on Tubi TV. You guys know Tubi? T-U-B-I. It's free streaming. That's the cool thing. You don't have to um, sign up. or On your phones, I think you have to sign up. But if you do it on your laptop or computer, home computer, mm -hmm. I, I think you can just watch stuff, whatever you want. There's movies and all kind of stuff, but a lot of anime. Um, I was trying to find a clip. Uh, which I, I don't know what episode it is. And this morning I was like trying to go through all the episodes. Where can I find this? Because it was one of those things where, <clears throat> you know, you're matching the lip flaps mm -hmm. when you do it. Yeah. So I'm trying. So I was in the booth. They're playing the character. Uh, it was one of these shots where all the characters they're like in a distance, you know, so they're really small, and you know, but you see their lips move and everything. So they they preview it. Okay, preview. Boop. And I'm looking. I don't see the lips. I didn't. I didn't see anything. Go well. Let's look again. And he goes, Yeah, you're right. I don't see the lips. And then they did it again. I was like, oh my God, I see the lips. And, and the lips were like, okay, here's the character. The lips were on the side in midair talking. Oh my God. So somehow the computer or however they did it, they didn't put, the lips didn't end up on the face. Oh no. It's like, mm. yeah, it was like, so I don't, maybe they did it on purpose. Like, you know, let's see if anybody notices. But that was, I thought that was funny. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. I wanted to find it so bad. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to show you just a clip from the show, um, that way you can kind of see if Who you knows, have... it might be in the clip? No, it's not, because I looked. No. Ah. Uh, oh, I'm so mad at myself that I didn't write that down. Okay, let's see if I can get this. Hold up. As many of you know, I'm very technically challenged. No. no. I'm a techie. Ditto. Okay, <laughs> I need your help. There you go. Okay, so I'll just set this up a little bit. Yep. Uh, when I first got this, they told me, they said, it's a cross between, um, uh, what's, it's kind of a game, a game uh, anime, you know where the, the kids, Yu -Oh? I think it's the Yu-Gi-Oh, I think these are the same people who created Yu-Gi-Oh. It looks like this art style, yeah. it's yeah. just slightly different. Right, so it's a, they said it's like a cross between Yu-Gi-Oh and Harry Potter, Whoa. because what it is, these are um, uh, kids who go to this like academy. And the whole thing is they have to collect all these battle discs and to be heroes. Mm -hmm. And in order to like collect them all to get this dragon, you know, it's a big old thing. But anyway, so I play the guy with the white hair. Um, and he is, where he comes from, they like are in the air. So, you know, they have kind of elements. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whereas this guy's like fire. And they have like a water, you know, that kind of stuff. They end up being friends, but he's, my character's kind of the snooty one, you know, like, I'm going to be the hero kind of guy, you know, and the other ones are a little more kiddish, immature, and I think, ugh, you know, but I end up kind of tagging along with them and everything, but, um, but it's just a fun role, so I'll just show you a bit of what happens in here if you guys are interested. Is that clear? Sir, sure. now we can finally settle things. Can't wait. Yes. <laughs> now match begin. Okay, I just gotta say something real quick. Okay, you heard how they say when they bring out their like the things creatures. they fight with creatures, Pokemon. they say you have to say birth, right? Mm -hmm. Like birth, Torok, birth. Well, the first one I get, and I have to say, it, so I almost want to laugh every time. One of mine is noob, so I would have to say birth, noob. Oh, noob. <laughs> and I, was like, birth, I get a noob. <laughs> so, I don't know if I birthed my noob in this one. <laughs> I would have looked, looked at the writers like, I know, really? right? Really? I'm birthing Did a I noob, and that? the mouth is on the side of, you know, in midair. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I'll poke my noob. Bravo! Fire Mirage, now! Like, <laughs> 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 I want you to ignore Grievo and then air bazooka the flames! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Oh no! The flames went out! Your 
camouflage isn't working. Winning a battle without harming your opponent is cowardly. Now why don't you try settling this by attacking me directly? Oh, God. Yeah. Well, if you won't, then I will. Birth, Cypher! And birth, Alarion! Oh, Haven't birthed the noob yet. I yeah. birthed the noob! It's painful when you birth the noob. Yeah. Why is that a power? Oh, man! He's got a new world! Oh Alarion, lightning flash directly in the center. Oh Wait, he's trying to target me? Now give up, Volkai. What? You've got to be kidding. I can't guarantee that you'll survive this. I'm not weak like you. I'm Hatchray. Now what? Oh no, Chico. Volkai is about to get hit. What? Torok, Alarion, and Cypher return. So anyways, they, they end up all becoming friends because they're being attacked by these, like, these kind of robot uh -oh. kind of people. So... <laughs> Hold it! Stop now! Ooh, we have to draw. Anyway, <laughs> so that's, that's the show. It's a lot of fun if you get a chance to watch this 26 episodes. I sure hope to God they do more because, you know, I love to work. I actually love doing this character, though. He was a lot of fun mm -hmm. because, you know, just he had that little air about him, the snootiness, <laughs> and, you know, he just thought he knew everything. Um, it, it does look like a crossover of Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, and Blade Blade because yeah. of the Blade Blade, because they always say let it rip before right. they summon, so... I'm sorry, but that line, I just hear let it rip and... <laughs> <laughs> let it, let I it rip. I can find the new somewhere. Let it rip. Because it's all about the noob. The noob. I need to put the that noob. on the And then that the, the give girl, the pink girl, <laughs> is kind of like... Um, I give a buff to it. Let me just let me see here. Hold on one. Mm -hmm. yeah. No problem. Let's rip, rip. Let me see. <laughs> okay. Do we, so I'm going to show you something else. <laughs> rip it. Could this be them? No, it's not them. Be quiet. <laughs> not speaking to you yet. Okay. It's Gosh. Okay. Uh, 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 I'm trying to get rid of this real quick. But well, what if we like the picture that we're looking at? Yeah, okay, here we go. I'm just going to... Okay, uh, like I was actually saying before about some of the acting I've done, I'll, um, I'll show you a clip of some of the scenes. This is... You know, like, we have to have a demo reel, like, even for a voice actor. You have a demo reel, like a commercial demo reel. You have a, a, vo a character demo reel. And as, an, as a live actor, you have, like, an acting reel. Um... So, I'll show you a little bit of mine. Good. Sometimes it's like such a pain because... Let's see. No, that's not it. I think this is it. Okay. Oh. Is this full screen? No. That's airplane. Okay, let me make this a little bigger. Sorry, guys. It's okay. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Darryl is so technically equivalent. Can you guys see it? If it's this size, is it okay? Question is, what's the minimum we need to accomplish in order to win re-election? Which provisions in Kennedy's bill can we live without? What the hell's a presidency for? Shit. Can't be about a shiny airplane or a room with no corner. Surely we can aspire to something greater. You want to back Kennedy's civil rights bill? What rights that belong to the men in this room should not be afforded to her? Sir, you're going to lose the support of the people who've always had your back. If you aren't successful, you're never going to earn the support of anyone else. How many senators Russell bring with him? Looks like the entire Southern delegation. Any idea what they want? Russell said they just wanted to wish you well. Yeah. <laughs> oh my 
Chancellor of Yerba is deemed a duck female guilty of assault upon his eyeball. <laughs> Do you think the Chancellor is wrong? Yes. <laughs> Don't cry. No. No, no, no. She is guilty. Guilty. What? I was liberated during the Sir David Death March inside of Flossenburg. He's a coward. Outside Flossenburg. That's right. By chance, is that on a road between two villages? Cham and Stamsreed? How do you know about those towns? Yes. Lived in Germany most of my life and had never heard of them. I was the first American officer to stop my tank when the Allies freed your group. Oh. April 23rd, 1945. You saved my life. Thank you. Thank you for everything you did. Officer Arnold, thank you. You're probably one of the few Jewish soldiers you'll find from St. Paul. Henry Ortelt. One of the newest German refugees here in Minnesota. <laughs> oh, yeah. You guys know this, right? You are. You are as I loved you. Aww. Can you do anything for her? Oh, big, 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 big. I'd like to take care of her. Yeah, I've seen a couple times. Uh huh. Talk to me. Of course. Yeah. Talk to Maya. Come with me. I've been a couple times. Why, hello there! Hiya! <laughs> We've heard so much about you. Oh, no. Haven't we, Hans? That's right? See, I am! Now, Hans, remember what we talked about. <laughs> you don't tell me what to do. Sorry, he's a bit... You don't tell me what to do! Oh, oh Lord. Yep. Okay. So I hear you do magic. <laughs> So that's that. Uh, so it helps to have like a variety of things, you know, like comedy, drama, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, so that way they know you can have some versatility, hopefully. Um, that Bozo's one, actually the last clip was a, like a little web series. And uh, so I play a sort of a deranged um, ventriloquist. So you really don't know if the dummy is real or if he's, because my character's like really nice, kind of Midwestern dude, and then this Nazi Germany is like racist and saying horrible things, and then my character's pretending it's not him, mm -hmm. you know? So, and then they, the clown's getting fights with the dummy, it's really yeah. funny. Three, oh, dummy. Dummy, uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, it is, okay, cool, awesome, thank you. Uh, oh, and I'm going to have a signing in here right after this. So if anybody wants anything signed or... Oh, and I need, uh, I need markers. Shoppie. Sharpies. Sharpies. Okay, great. Um, Sharpies. Anybody have any questions about anything else? Anything else? Yes. Do you ever think about cosplaying your character as you do? Uh, I would love to cosplay Lael from Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Crystal Bearers. Oh, yes. Because yes. yes. he's got the coolest leather jacket. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, so that would be fun. But it would, that's one of those that looks so expensive, though, to make, you know? Uh, no? I mean, if you know the right people yeah. that can guide you to the right direction. That's true. Because, like, with armor, like, um, people buy, like, the really expensive stuff, but yeah. you can use an Ava phone from, like, yeah. Amazon or, like, go to Home Depot and just cut the play mats out and just make I want the real stuff! Well, too bad. No. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You ever took something from the, like, from the set? <laughs> Have I ever taken something from this set? Yeah, because I'll let it, yeah. keep it like a little set. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Wow, did I ever do that? <laughs> Tell the truth. You know, like, well, with wardrobe, you're always tempted. You know, and you always hope that they'll say, you know, if you want the suit, you can have it. Because, you know, it fits you, right? But, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're really strict. strict. Oh, yeah, yeah. Even the socks. They're like no touch. They count the socks. You know, like they've given oh, yeah. you, if they've given you a prop, like a watch, or like I had a wedding ring from that character, even though you don't really see it a lot. Mm -hmm. um, they know you've got a wedding ring, they know you have a tie, they know exactly what they've given you and they're accountable to it. You know, I mean, that's why, like, even there's a, several shops in LA, one of them's called um, off, um, uh, Take 
it's a take or something like that. Or it's a wrap, it's a wrap. Yeah. What they do is they sell a wardrobe from the studios. Oh. And, you know, and so, and like a lot of uh, movies and soap opera, like I, I got a jacket from that movie. It was a Adam Sandler movie. It was really bad, but I got a great jacket. You know, it's like a thrift store, but they label, they tell you where it's from. Because oh, cool. all they do is stuff from studios. So sometimes you can get cool costumes for Halloween and stuff. Um, and then there's just like normal clothes, a lot of soap operas. Because you know, they go through clothes like crazy. So they put them there and they sell them, you know, cheaper. So that's kind of cool. Exactly. But I don't think I've ever taken anything that I can remember. How about you ever like, like geek out? Oh yeah, sure. Like uh, where you be well, with them? Yeah. Well, you know, and I, Ariana Grande was on the set with me for oh, yeah. you know, before she was Ariana Grande, right? Because she was in Victoria's. Yeah, how cute. You know, but you know, the funny thing is, like, I saw she would always she was singing a lot on on set. Oh yeah. She would always have her, ear, her earphones in, you know, and she was singing a lot. So I'm not surprised, you know, where she is now. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's weird. Like, well, Woody Harrelson. Oh yes, oh my God. You know, I'll tell you like a story. I mean. When I got the part, of course, I was really excited. Uh, Rob Reiner is the director. And uh, of course, you know, I get to meet Rob Reiner. Cool. And we did a table read in Los Angeles. But we actually filmed in New Orleans for five weeks. And so when, I, when they flew me to New Orleans, um, my, very first, uh, my very first scene, what, I had no lines in this scene, which I was really glad because I just wanted to feel the environment, you know, before I had to really act. And it was a group of us, and Woody Harrelson's there, he's LBJ, and he's walking to the Senate, because he's going to give a speech. And there's a few lines between him and C. Thomas Howell, and I think another actor, and there's just the group of us walking straight. So I'm standing there, they put us where we need to be, the camera's over there, and then I'm just like, oh my god, I can't believe I'm like, I'm here, you know? And um, Woody Harrelson turns over to me, he looks at me, and he says, can you believe we're in a Rob Reiner movie? That's one off my bucket list. <laughs> and I looked at him, I said, well, I'm in a Rob Reiner movie with Woody Harrelson. That's one off my bucket list. And he says, that's so nice. And he turns around, okay, take one. And we st you know, I'm like, okay. Oh my God. And then I'm standing there too, and I'm thinking to myself, Oh my God, how do I walk? How, how do I even walk? So, then they say action and I just, okay, walk. Just walk. <laughs> Pretend you know what you're doing. I know. So, yeah. So that was kind of, but it kind of broke the ice, you know, to be able to be in a scene where you don't have lines. That's good. So, yeah. So that was kind of cool. But yeah, of course I geek out, you know. I'll tell you another one. Okay, like if you're in a movie, every day there's a call sheet, right? And it lists cast and crew, whoever's supposed to be there that day. Everyone is assigned a number. Thanks, guys. Everyone is assigned a number. Like, Woody Harrelson's number one. Okay, I was number 14. Uh, Richard Jenkins, you guys know Richard Jenkins? Okay, great actor, he's been nominated to Oscars. Uh, well, he's in it, so is Bill Pullman, so is um, Jennifer Jason Lee. Uh, you know, it's a good cast of people. So there was one day where, I mean, usually I was in, it was like, okay, we have like one, three, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. You know, because we were a group of guys. So we knew. And one day, that scene where I'm walking with Woody Harrelson, you guys remember that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So that day, that, that scene is I'm basically walking and, we, and I open the door and there's Richard Jenkins playing a senator and then all these extras who are playing senators. So on that day, on the call sheet, it was one, four, and 14. And I was like, it's just me, Richard Jenkins, and Woody Harrelson. You know? So I just, that geeked me out. Stuff like that does oh, yeah, geek me yeah, out, yeah, I have yeah. to admit. You know, so it was a lot of fun, though. I, I just, I like to act, you know. It's, it's always a different experience, each, each thing you do, you know. I don't care how big it is or how <coughs> low budget it is or whatever. You know, I enjoy the process and, and, you know, seeing what happens. You just enjoy doing it. Yeah. You know, I mean, and, and that's sort of, the, that's the bad thing, though, too, about it, is because it's so difficult to get work. I mean, I, I don't, like, look at myself and say, oh, I've made it. I don't, you know, I, I just, I mean, it's still hard for me to get work in anything. The voiceovers, too, because there's so many people. I just feel grateful for anything I get.
you know, because to me it's almost like a miracle to get a job because the amount of people trying to even, the amount of people trying to work for free in stuff in LA that they don't want to pay people to even do the job, you know? And so, yeah. I mean, and I would love to just act, you know, all the time. But, you know, sometimes you don't, and then you're waiting weeks and weeks, and then you're waiting for an audition. Do I get one? Do you do an audition? Am I gonna get it? You don't get, you know, so you just keep moving ahead until, you know, so. But yeah, it is, a, it's a, I, you know, a lot of people say, should I be an actor or whatever? And, and I'm like, it's hard sometimes to even say, even though like I love doing what I'm doing, and I'm used to the lifestyle, because you, you kind of have to really just get you, I don't say it's thick skin, you just kind of have to get used to it. You're not gonna get every part you audition for. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's gonna like what you do. Um, you're not always gonna be working, unless sometimes, you know, unless you're that small percentage that actually does. Because it's a very small percentage that constantly works. Um, so I feel lucky to be in where I'm at. You know, I, don't ha I didn't have any connections moving to LA. I wasn't born into an acting family, into a voiceover family, into, any production family, you know, I just kind of went out like doop de doop de doop, I here I am, you know, and hoping that something sticks, right? Mm -hmm. So, and it's still, it's still work. I mean, you know, if I keep doing it till I'm 98, you know, I'm sure it's still going to be difficult, right? Mm -hmm. So, yes. So, it's a two-parter. So, yes. how'd you? So, how'd you get the that role it from in Victorious, mm -hmm. and what was it like? being on that set with Victorious? <clears throat> um, you know, that Victorious was actually great to work on because they rehearsed like a play. That's how, they, they were, a lot of shows you don't rehearse in order. Mm -hmm. They rehearsed in order every scene. And of course, all the sets are in the same um, building. So, you know, you just move from set to set to set, you know, and I, I was just in that one scene, so I didn't, but I, you know, I, I could watch the process, which was cool. Um, now, how I auditioned, um, so I went in, my agent got me the audition, and I went in, you know, a lot of people. And every time you go to an audition, there's tons of other actors also there to audition. And um, I just made a, I made a choice, like, to add something to the part, because um, I said the lines, and, but then, you know, how he's all nervous and everything, and at the very end, I collapsed, and then I collapsed on the floor, and I put my, I put my thumb in my mouth. And, you know, I went, I added, I said, I went to my mama, and I, start, I put my thumb in my mouth and curled up in a fetal position. <laughs> I just decided to do that, you know? So I left, you know, not, I, when I leave an audition, as I've gotten older, not when I was younger, because I used to stress like crazy when I was younger, uh, now that I'm older, I, I just do the part, I do the best I can, and I try to leave it at the door, you know, and just trust that whatever's supposed to happen is gonna happen. And um, I didn't have to do a callback, which was nice. I just got the part after that. So, but I did end up getting the part. But I didn't get to like go into fetal position and you know, suck my thumb. Uh, but in fact, uh, though, they were just gonna have me draw and stay there on the floor. But she kept forgetting the line. There was a line she says, but she kept forgetting it. Like, is that my lawyer? I can't remember what the line was, but. Um, so in order for her, they, they needed some kind of physical clue to like remind her to say the line. So we kind of came up with, okay, just crawl, crawl away like you're scampering, like a little scared animal, you know? So that helped her remember to say a line, you know? Cause she saw me going away, that's my lawyer, you know? So instead of me just laying there, cause she was forgetting to even say it. So, you know, there's always stuff like that too that happens. But it was, it was a lot of fun being on that show because of stuff like that. Did anyone see that episode? Okay, because it was a two-part episode, and if you remember, there's a big prison dance yeah. number. Yeah. So what they did, uh, Nickelodeon Studios, uh, is where they filmed it, was on Sunset and Vine. And so they built the prison in the parking lot of that studio. Oh, yeah. So anybody like going on Sunset could totally see like this big dance number happening in the prison. Oh, yeah. you know, so I, I get to watch it because I was on set that day. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a lot of fun to just see how they do things, how they make stuff, and yeah. Anybody else? Yes, sir. What's your favorite part of uh, stage acting, mm -hmm. on, on set, and then also voice acting? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, I love all of it. The thing I like about theater is you have time to develop a character, you have time to grow into the character, and live 
performance. You know, you get the feedback and everything. Uh, film is cool because you can retake stuff. You know, thanks guys for coming. I appreciate it. Um, you can retake, you know, things. Um, and you know, it's kind of cool because a lot of times you work with kind of name people sometimes, and that's always just kind of fun, right? Um, and and what else? Voiceover. Yes. Voiceover I love because, um, especially anime, because I like that they're really stories and the characters go through so many emotions. So you, you get to act. It's not like, oh, I'm being Bugs Bunny or playing a funny thing, right? You get to really be, you get to know a character because you're going through so many episodes. Um, and I also love that, wow, I can go in in like my t-shirt and my jeans and I don't have to dress up or anything, you know? I can just go in and be cash and stuff. So that's kind of, that's easy too. So, um, oh, and I, I did a, okay, a B movies. I actually did a B movie in Florida years, years ago, years ago, <laughs> in a galaxy far, far away. Um, it was a spring break movie. It was one of my first. Oh, well, it's called Spring Fever USA. Ugh. And then it became Lauderdale on video or something. Uh, you can actually find it on YouTube, the whole movie. Oh, I'm just saying, I'm tempted you'll now. see me like, I have a lead in this thing, so I, I was like this little, little skinny guy trying to chase this dream girl from LA to Florida, and she's very elusive. And so, and there's all these just stupid characters, like my friend Animal, and then there's Dick and Duke Dork, and they're trying, these bad guys, and the bad girl, they're trying to kidnap her, and you know, this crazy. And I had to oil wrestle at Summers at Fort Lauderdale, and I had to jump from a big thing into a pool, which they had a stunt guy, uh, belly flop into a pool, all this just to get this girl. Uh, oh, but we had cigarette boat chases in the ocean, though, which was fun. <laughs> I didn't have to have any lines, just yeah. like, yeah, and we, all day long, they had a helicopter over us and two cigarette bows chasing, it was, yeah. but it's the goofiest, dumbest movie ever, but it was, but it was work, you know, it was a great experience to do that, and plus I got to come to Florida, you know, and I, we were here like four weeks in Fort Lauderdale area, so that was really cool for me, and, uh, but then I also did, I, okay, this B movie horror movie. And I'm gonna bring this up for a reason. Uh, anyone ever hear Silent Night, Deadly Night about the Santa Claus killer thing? I a, think I heard it. Okay, it's a real B movie horror movie. And you know, there's a genre of people that love that kind of B movie horror. Yeah. I was in Silent Night, Deadly Night Part Two, and I play the killer as a teenager. So it's like a flashback where you see him do one of his first kills, right? So that's me, I get to kill. And um, so I got a, um, this was, God, this is a long time ago. And just this year, I get this um, uh, contact on Facebook. Well, they're re-releasing the movie because some anniversary, right? But um, on Blu-ray, because it's never been on Blu-ray. And they even have like a action figure of the main actor, in it, but it does look just like him. And there's all this pre-order stuff going on. So they had me come in, because one of the extras is talking to the actors, you know, about the experience of doing it, you know. And then they have the director and the main actor doing commentary. Doing, so I mean, they're really pushing this movie like I've never seen something, you know, like a, I've never seen that for that kind of movie to be pushed like this. And so yeah, they interviewed about five of us actors as well as a the makeup guy and then the director, of course. So anyway, uh, that's that. Uh, I think what time is it? It's uh, 103. 103. Okay, so I think I'll be doing an audit. If any less, any last question or comment or anything? Well, I got yes. one question. Yes. Are you excited for the fact that they're bringing back uh, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles on the Switch? Yes. I'm very glad. Yeah, I was so on a Thank you guys for sitting through. <laughs> Appreciate it. I am so excited for yes. it myself. I, I, have, I, I actually have something where next month I'm going to be working on, which I cannot say one word about it. <laughs> Just that something's coming up. I can't say anything. Mm -hmm. We want to know. Oh, and so I'm going to me TV. Watch Heroes Legend of the Battle Disc and find my, my lips. Flapping next to my wind. head. <laughs> and seriously, there. Facebook me or something if you find it. Tell me what episode. Mm -hmm. I still can't find it. But it's hilarious. I thought it was just hilarious. No, no. 
You, were you here when I talked about it earlier? Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was the weirdest. I thing. think somebody posted that on Tumblr one time. Did they? It was a screenshot, and the lid was like yeah. Right well, here. that's yeah. I think that's. A, but they, I don't think they put the episode what, they, there. Oh no, yeah. they just only have, put the. I name know they're in a cave, of, and I was trying to like go through really quick because episodes where they were in caves because it's there several. <laughs> And, but I couldn't find that one particular thing. I said, oh, it's not here, it's not here, it's not here. It's somewhere, it's somewhere, it's somewhere. It is somewhere. Yeah, it's like a lot of fun. And I'll definitely keep an eye out for it. Please do. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you. I appreciate it. I guess I'm in here signing. You know, Normally I'm over there. I don't know. Yeah, that's weird, because I know they had the signing there, there the whole some weekend. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to be over there yeah, still. But I've been to some cons where it's like, even though voice actors would be over there, they're like, mm. eh, fudge it, we'll just have it in here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That is true. I think I'll just go there, though. No. Unless you guys want anything to sign in here, I'll do that, too. I actually yes. do have, I do have something to sign. Yes, awesome. Yep. Thank, Thank you, guys. You're welcome.